Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. And what a day to do a live stream as the price continues to pump. So we've got a lot of talk about, so let's just jump right in. So the first thing, of course, uh, unless you have not done this yet, uh, the price of Bitcoin is uh, hitting up quite, quite massively. And uh, it's when I was taking a look at this, there was there was this old reference that I had been uh, had been talking about before and was all about Tether and about how easy it could actually be. But before we get into that, I just want to take a look and just congratulate again, everybody, for getting through the hard times of the crypto market and the bear that uh, that was. And it was brutal. It was massively brutal. But today is another day to take a big celebration. So today, I think we topped out at around 66.7, so almost hit 67,000. All-time high is roughly around 69,000. And man, you cannot... You cannot ask for a better day. And of course, we'll take a look at the ETF as all the numbers roll in. But uh, of course, right now it's only uh, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So we've got a long time before the uh, the market closes. But we can take a look. And I, I found this quite interesting as, as far as like last week, because, you know, for ETFs and trades and things like that, they have to do that during normal business hours. So of course, the weekend is shut down. That's why I'm not a big fan of the ETFs. I know some people are. They put it into their retirement accounts, and that's fine. I personally think if I'm going to do a retirement account, uh, what I'll probably do or what I'm doing right now is using iTrust because I can move things around there 24-7, 365, and I don't have to use just Bitcoin. I can use a lot of other things. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, all right, let's take a peek at uh, looking at the flows. So on Friday, and this is a great website, heyapollo.com. Uh, links in the description. You can take a look as far as the ETFs. And you'll see that uh, most of the days is a positive net inflow. Not a big outflow, but of course, with Grayscale doing its job, which is, of course, just dumping, you can see that's happened across the way. And Friday was no different when it was a massive amount, a massive amount of actually outflow from Grayscale itself. You had 492 million. I think no, it's pretty much in line with what it's been dumping lately. I mean, uh, the second day of the ETF was 484, then 460, and so on and so forth. So I'm not really too surprised about it, but uh, it was a big amount of uh, of dumping on the market, and uh, there was a little bit uh, to be absorbed. So it was a negative 139 million, but still, the total spot ETF is 7.3 billion dollars. So it's looking pretty good. And I was thinking about this. I'm like, you know, such a such a massive amount of outflows. What was some of the deciding factors as far as like this monster day? Because today, I mean, look, we started today at 62, 62, and we hit to 67. That's a pretty hard thing to do for an asset that has roughly, well, the fully diluted value or the market cap itself. We'll just take a look at that is 1.3 trillion. So to move 5%, 10% is pretty massive. So when I was thinking a look at this, I'm like, what was it? What was the thing that could really have pushed it over? Now, there's more ETFs coming in. There's a whole host of things. But someone had told me a long time ago, they said, if you want to know when the next pumps are, just watch Tether and see how much gets minted. Now, this isn't the only thing, obviously, right? There's more ETFs coming in. There's more people buying into Bitcoin. The narrative is there. We're about to hit on a halving. I know some people say that the halving has nothing to do uh, with the Bitcoin price action. I do not agree with that, but uh, that's for another debate some other time. But they did say like, look, when it's all about liquidity and if liquidity is there, and we saw that, of course, with in the uh, Cerveza sickness era, when we had uh, stimmy checks all over the place, this was something I said, well, maybe I'll take a look at that at some point. On February 20th, there was a billion dollars worth of tether minted, right? And I said, "Hey, the U.S. has the the U.S. has the Federal Reserve, and the crypto market has the tether reserve." And I took a look at that on February twentieth. I didn't really think too much of it because it was right around here when Bitcoin was around fifty thousand. I was like, "Ah, eh, you know, not a big deal." And then, of course, for like five or six days or so, nothing really happened. And then the the sixth day up to the seventh, you saw major price appreciation. Now, of course, there's a lot of factors to look at that, but it sure does help when there's a lot of liquidity into the market. Then, of course, we kept rising, then a little sideways. And then, of course, on March 3rd at 6 in the morning, Whale Alert says, hey, another billion dollars just got minted at the Treasury. 
are the Tether Treasury. And I linked this in the description so you can follow Whale Alert on X. And of course, what happened on March 3rd? Well, 62,000. Now here we are, almost 67,000. So again, I take a look at this. I'm like, is it that easy just to see where the next pump is? Like just buy a massive amount of Bitcoin whenever when Tether comes in? Maybe, maybe not. But I think it's something to be aware of. But on top of that, you know, there's a lot of bullishness going out especially when we talk about ETFs. This was a, a piece from Blockworks, talks about restricting access to growing Bitcoin ETFs becoming hard to justify. There was another, another group of institutions that are coming in. And to me, when I look at the ETFs and just how much money has been made, how can you deny this? Like Vanguard, I know the CEO was just removed or stepped down because he stated that he would never allow his customers to participate in a Bitcoin ETF. <clears throat> And since this ETF is the largest and grandest of all time so far, as far as inflows, I think it's a huge mistake. And I think a lot of the traditional finance people were like, wow, maybe I'm going to get into this. And of course, it just makes a lot of sense going from there. But then if we think about it, these ETFs, there's a lot of correlations between this and the people that are coming in and the last gold ETF. I know people are sick of talking about this, you know, making parallel parallels between gold ETFs and the Bitcoin ETF. One thing I will say about this, I never really truly thought about, was that when this ETF came in, and of course we talked about how like for the last, first 10 months or so, it pretty much just went sideways. <clears throat> it didn't do a lot. But then, you know, over time it starts to, you know, really rip and, and uh, take effect. The one difference, the one glaring difference between this gold ETF and a Bitcoin ETF is that when this ETF came through, a lot of the gold miners, people in gold production, people that dealt with the investment of gold, knew it would be very, very good for the market. So what they do, they started to ramp up the amount of production that they could do for gold. They started to get into more mining, more people, more of what would actually allow gold to be produced or to be mined out and actually uh, brought into uh, the public. And with Bitcoin, you can't do that. So we're about to hit a halving on April, April 20th, I believe, correct me in the comment section. So if that holds out to be true, we've got, this is the first time in human history, we have an ETF that has a truly finite amount, not just scarce, finite. And we have more ETF coming in more people who want it. It just, maybe we're not bullish enough. I hate to say it like that, but maybe that's what it is. So yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. If it's that easy, just for like, uh, just following the whale watch and see what they do, or if it's just a little bit more something complex. But I will say that there are some other macro events that are kind of holding us down. Not holding us down, but making people think, which is this. And I, and I think this is something that's really should be in the public consciousness, which is debt and inflation. I just found this on CNBC. The national debt, this is just in the U.S. We're really good at this. The U.S. national debt is rising by a trillion dollars every 100 days. Imagine that. Roughly every three months, our debt goes to an increase by a trillion dollars. How are we able to pay that back? I mean, is it all about GDP and the goods and services that we actually produce and export? Uh, are we going to be able to pay that debt through those types of things? No, <laughs> no. We're just going to have to print our way out of it. And when we print our way out of it, then we're going to see stuff like this. This is my favorite website to, if I had to show somebody, these days I don't really care about trying to orange pill people. It's not my job anymore. Uh, I've done my, I did my best years ago. If they want to come here, great. I'm like a lazy outfielder. You know, if the pop fly's coming, I'll catch it, but I'm not going to dive for it. So like with this one, and talking about inflation, if you just show somebody this, just make it super simple. Just show them this website, click on new houses, and just look at this. Just say, you know, in 2019, roughly four years ago, it cost 82 Bitcoin for a new house when a new house was like $300,000. Now a new house in America is 430,000 and it only, geez, is that right? It costs less than seven Bitcoin for that new house. 
So as time goes on, I think Jeff Booth said this flawlessly, if you don't get into Bitcoin, then everything that you buy will increase in price. If you buy Bitcoin and use Bitcoin and have it, things will decrease in price. Well, not really. Be able to actually because the value of Bitcoin goes up. But you can see right here, just take a look at house prices. That's what everybody measures their, well, most people measure their wealth against like, you know, the houses that they own or, or how much value they have in there because that's the American dream. And we can see right here that it's really not the case because it just keeps going down. Anyhow, that will be my my orange pill selection. And then we go from there. And then lastly, let me just say this. I don't understand the people that, that's better. I don't understand the people that are actually shorting Bitcoin right now or we're getting into it. I know people where they would talk about it like, well, you know, when we go into the having, then there's, and uh, there's a there's price depreciation, and then afterwards there's this. I'm like, no, there's not. I mean, they're kind. Of, okay, let me just show you this. Let's just go over this real quick. So let's see. Let's max out. So the last the last Bitcoin having was May 11th, somewhere around there, 2020, right? So it went from eight thousand. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 8,610, 9,000, 9,000, 8,000, 10,000. So I don't know what people were really saying that it does that. I don't think it really does that. I guess if you go all the way back to March, let's, let's go back. Let's go back some more. So we can see 8,000, 8,000, 9,000, 9,135, and there was a drop off to five. But of course, Unless there's another pandemic that's going to happen, I don't really see that going through. So maybe I'm wrong. And if we go all the way back to 2016, I want to say it was in June, somewhere around there. And we can see this March, April, May, June rallied in 750 bucks. Then it crashed to 591. But again, this would be like after the halving. I just don't get, I don't know. I, I just don't get people shorting it because of like it has to do this this thing before but maybe that's the narrative and that's what it is so i don't really see it happening that way but uh we'll go from there anyhow let me just think about that in the comments but there is something i'd like to to talk about which is we're all big on bitcoin right we are everybody loves bitcoin it's the number one but at some point there's going to be a shift and that shift is going to go to all coins and if you if you're like Bitcoin only, you can. This is the t the point where you need to turn off because you're like I'm Bitcoin only, and everything else is S coins. That's cool. For me, I have seventy percent uh, of my portfolio into Bitcoin. However, I know coming up, they're going to be a, a a little bit of a rally of altcoins. I know it. I know because that's usually what happens. <laughs> And also, it's really what it comes down to is retail. When retail comes in, they will pump the price of altcoins. They're going to come in. They're going to see the price of Bitcoin at 100000 or whatever it is and say, look, I can't afford 100000 And no one's going to tell them about Satoshis. They're not going to say, you can buy 10 bucks of Bitcoin if you really want to. They're just going to see that sticker price and go, I don't like that. But that Dogecoin's over there at $1.20. I'll probably get something like, I'll get like 10 of those. I can afford that. So... Altcoins at some point will go up. Do they do things and they have utility? Sure. But uh, in the long run, it's all hype, speculation, and greed. So having said all that, let's talk about AI coins for a second. And the reason I want to talk about this is because Jerry V. Hall, was, uh, he was at Panama for this AI conference. And he said he, he met with over 20 different individuals. He's doing like a mini documentary. Jerry's great. I'm going to have him on the show very soon. He said, this is the ones that if uh, talking to everybody, these are the ones that I would get into. And if you go to CoinGecko and you go to the categories, of course, the ones that are on fire, quote unquote, are artificial intelligence. You can click on that and it'll show you the top AI type of projects. And you can also find out where they're actually listed. So you see BitTensor, Render, Fetch AI, Corgi AI, Singularity, Akash, and Gollum. 
And Jerry did say, he's like, yeah, BitTensor is great and it's probably going to do fantastic. But if we max out to see where we're at, it's already done some pretty magnificent gains. And over a year, it's up 515%. Gosh, geez, that's a lot. So it used to be, yeah, 100, now it's 637. Of course, look at the total supply and max supply, 21 million. That's why. And then we take a look at render, which I don't have any bit tensor. I have some render, and I bought it a while ago. Total supply is 531 million. And of course, if we max out on this one, we can see that it's done its job. It used to be eight cents on 2020. And look where we're at today. So if you want to get into render, it'll probably do great. But I'm just saying, if we're taking a look at like some price appreciation, did we miss anything? So I don't know. Here's the other ones that Jerry talked about. Singularity. And singularity, the ways that he talked about it and why it's going to be great, I'll have him on to explain it. But I'm just looking at price action. If we max out here, we can see that, whew, first of all, it used to do, man, this was all the way in 2018. This was back in the, wow, this thing's been around forever. And of course, it crashed to a nickel. And then, then, then it went up 2021 to, ooh, where'd it go? Didn't hit its all-time high, whatever this is, this candle. And then over here, 60-something cents, crashed down. Then over here, then over here, it's at 95 cents. So he said that could be a good one, but it's already done a, a lot of uh, price appreciation. Fetch AI, same thing. He said, Fetch AI is going to do great. I don't know how well it's going to do, but look at this price action. It's already gone crazy. But I remember in 2017, when I got into Bitcoin, it was $8,000. And people said, well, it's already done an 8X from 1,000 from the last all-time high. And then also they talked about, well, you know, that Ethereum at 300 bucks, that's pretty much topped out. It used to be like, you know, 25 cents. And of course, here we are today. So take it for what you what it's worth. But then he also talked about hypercycle. I think this one could be, this one could be a sleeper. And it's the same guys that did, that uh, are part of Singularity Net. Essentially, it's essentially it's deep in for AI using the uh, computational power of your unused um, unused computer, and actually paying you in hypercycle. But if we max out, this just started not too long ago. May of 2023 it used to be 38 cents. And that's only that. So take that as you see fit. And then also uh, talking about uh, deep end stuff, which I'm going to do a deep dive on this one. It's Minutes Network. It's from the same guys that brought you uh, World Mobile. And to me, like this one makes sense. And I'll talk about this on the other channel. I won't uh, do the whole thing, but it kind of goes like this. If you want to add value to anything, all the stuff that we just talked about, this is from Brian Tracy, great Arthur. And he says, you have to produce more, cheaper, faster, and easier, right? Produce more, cheaper, faster, and easier. And it's the same thing with deep end. So like you could build a bunch of warehouses and spend the cost for that. Labor, production costs. Then of course you have to do the permits, electricity, water. Then you got to actually fill this all up with all the Ah, the networks and the computer and the and the cable and employees and insurance and all that stuff. And then, of course, put everything in and then build up your AI new center, right? Or you can say, ah, forget that. Let's just use the, the computers around the world for people and pay them in Akash or Hypercycle we just talked about or Theta or Render. Or if we're going to do something like, you know what? We just want to do file storage. We don't want to make a bunch of different warehouses and pay a boatload of money, like which is what Google does for cloud com, uh, com, uh, computational services. We want to do Filecoin or Arweave. That makes sense, right? That's the whole deep end. They're like, we don't want to do that. We just want to use your computer and we'll pay you to use your computer. And it makes a lot of sense. Or you could do it like what Helium and World Mobile did. They said, look, instead of us erecting a whole cell phone tower and then paying the people to do that, paying for the land, paying for the permits, the upkeep, the insurance and everything else, we're going to make you guys buy the nodes itself, the physical nodes, and then we're going to have you stake with us and we'll pay you in Helium and or World Mobile token. It's it's a great arrangement. And of course, you can use, you can, hopefully it all works out. I still have my World Mobile token and an Earth node provider. And then of course, with, with Minutes Network, this is the whole point of this. Minutes Network goes like this. Instead of us using these middlemen who essentially, if you make a call on your cell phone, 
there's always the people in the middle that take a cut of that. And they're the connectors. So if you call somebody, there's this thing called a wholesale voice communication network. And it's a $251 billion network. And they have to buy all these different warehouses and all these computers and everything else. And what Minutes Network said is, how about we do this? We're going to take two lines of code. We're going to stick them in your favorite apps. We're going to grab some nodes. We're going to have, and we're actually going to pay people in Minutes Network token. They're going to actually share in the revenue process. And it's 80% less expensive for cell phone customers. I will talk more about that later. I just want to see, just tell you guys of what's happening and what's going on outside of Bitcoin. Because I think we get a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of tunnel focus, but uh, I think there's opportunities out there and we'll go from there. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And then we talk about it's time sensitive, especially going into the halving, which is coming up in roughly four or five weeks, somewhere around there. But that's it. Thanks so much. I appreciate you.